I saved up 1.7 million action points to spend it on killing barbarians in a KVK. 1,668,650 to be accurate. All this time I've been waiting and saving my AP for a KVK with the right conditions. Which were, firstly and most importantly, a KVK where the fights ended relatively early. Preferably before King's Land, or soon after King's Land opened. Simply because I would never focus on barbing and farming while there is a war going on. Secondly, it had to be a KVK, where we would have access to the ruins and altars so the push could be more successful and get the best rewards possible. And in this KVK, finally all planets have a line. Dun, da, 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 da. Epic intro! Firstly, before the push, I took a screenshot of every item I had, so I would be able to get a more accurate list on the items I have gotten during these days. You can note of every reward that didn't come from killing barbarians or forts, such as alliance chests, Gypsy Ladies Boutique, Legendary Tavern, Expedition, Expedition Store, Lost Canyon Challenge Rewards, Daily VIP Chests, and so on so on. Which proved to be a very mentally challenging test to do. Just look at this notebook. I also took a screenshot every time I healed my hospital to be able to tell how much resources I had to spend on healing. As you see, I'm not a whale, I'm just an average dolphin. I'm at VIP 16 which means I have 1700 total action points, 56% action points recovery, recharging one action point every 23 seconds. There were 18 days and 23 hours left till the end of the KVK, the Lohars event just begun and I decided that it was the perfect time to start a push. I was ranked 739 on the leaderboard, 170,641 points behind rank 1. Let the grind begin! My strategy was simple, put out 5 peacekeeping marches and only kill barbs that are at least level 51. <laughs> I experimented with a lot of different pairings and ways to kill barbs. First, I just sent out random marches. I quickly realized that this is not the best strategy. KVK barbs were quite tough. At first, I had to refresh my marches quite often, till I found the right strategy. In the end, I went with this. I used Lohar and Richard as the tank. It was always the first march to hit a barb, and it proved to be quite a successful one. I had Budika and Harald. Budika needed for the heal, and Harald had the proc damage. Salsa and Nevsky was the absolute star of this setup. It was the immortal march, eventually even reaching 2500 plus consecutive barb kills. Amazing! And I only had to recall this march because of Ark of Osiris. The Ashan Constantine was there, only for Constantine's buff, so I would get a little less damage from the barbs. At first I had Alex on the field. I thought that the double shield and the proc damage could be very useful on the field, but somehow it just died way too fast. And then I had a Minamoto Saladin, but only because I needed a fifth march and I was really out of troops and options. Bahalan back! You might ask the question why I didn't use AoE commanders like Ethelflaed so that I could get some free points by hitting barbs that I didn't spend AP on. The answer is I did at first. I used Ethelflaed for a few days, but then I realized that the occasional AoE in fact slowed down my progress. She kept hitting lower level barbs around that I didn't want to spend AP on and after taking down two or three of them I had to go back to my city and refresh the march. So I ended up excluding her from my barb hunting marches and decided to stick with my single target commanders. Through this push, I was the most active during events that rewarded players for killing barbs, such as Lohar's Trials, Strategic Reserve, Clarion Call, and a Mightiest Governor Day 2 and Day 7. Climbing up the honor ranks proved to be mentally draining. I wanted to reach the top as soon as possible and put a gap between me and the others. For this, I played 2 hours before work, 2 hours during lunchtime and pretty much all the time after work till I had to sleep. Yeah, real life is overrated anyways. The things we do for rock. Now, let's begin. This is how the push went. Climbing up the honor ranks went a lot smoother than I expected, but it was a seriously mentally draining and challenging task to do. It was very monotone and super super boring. As I mentioned, Lohar's trial just begun when I started the push and I wanted to get the best out of it to get as many rewards as possible. I managed to kill 3195 barbarians these two days which immediately took me from rank 739 to rank 34. Right after Lohar's trial has ended, the Mightiest Governor just begun. I managed to get the second spot for Mightiest Governor Day 2 which gave me 300 gems and a little bit of extra resources. After these few days I was already at 200k points. From there I quickly climbed to rank 9 and finally got in the top 10. Then 13 days at 23 hours before the end got into the top 5 with 236k points. I was catching up on the rank 3 real fast. Then the strategic reserve has begun and I decided that I will become rank 1 on the overall honor ranking leaderboards by the end of it. Soon I got into the top 3 then finally reached rank 2. In the meantime 
I managed to get rank 15 on day 6 of the Mightiest Governor, which gave me 80 gems and a bit of extra speedups and resources. With this, I also managed to get rank 14 on the overall rankings of the Mightiest Governor, getting 440 gems, 18 hours of speedups, 15 level 2 resource packs and 10 Omanitor heads, which is great because I haven't unlocked her yet. And you all know what that means. <laughs> Then 10 days, 16 hours, 18 minutes before the end, I finally caught up to rank 1. He seemed to be inactive at the time, so I thought it would be really fun to flex a little bit and wait till he opens up the honor rank list and sees that I suddenly have the exact same amount of points like he does. I waited a few hours, then when I saw that he is active again, I took over rank 1. Epic! And at the same time, with the power of the pink yoga suit, we got the great cigarette as well. Perfection! Soon after this, the strategic reserve event has ended which gave me an extra 1500 gems, 100 legendary gathering commander sculptures, 20 hours of training speedups and a bit of other stuff, alongside 2489 supply chests. A fun fact most of you might have already known, but there is a daily limit on how many supply chests you can get by killing barbarians. For me, after about 680, I couldn't get any more chests, only from collecting resources on the map. Anyways, moving on. After this, I decided to put up a little bigger gap between me and rank 2. I kept on killing barbarians and quickly, I managed to put up a little nice 40k point gap between us, hitting 400k honor points in the process. Then something unexpected has happened. Right after an altar of darkness has closed, rank 2 has disappeared from the list. He has migrated out from his kingdom, leaving all his sweet rewards behind, making his honor push, the time he spent, his AP, his energy meaningless. Unless of course, he only did it because he wanted to get as much speedups and resource tokens as possible, so he could just open them in his new kingdom. But also could be because he ran out of action points and he thought that soon a lot of people would pass him. So there would be no point to wait here while his target kingdom has been recruiting. But still, it really surprised me. I don't think I've seen anybody migrating out from a KVK where he's ranked 2 and there's only a few days left from the event. After this, since I had a safe distance between me and the now new rank 2, and also because just managed to max the plundering 2 tech, I decided to finish off those 30 cars I saved up. And I got all this from them. Look at all the awesome rewards and gold heads. Do you see them? Well, I don't either. Where are the gold heads, Lilith? After this, I got a second spot on the Clarion Colibon, which gave me an extra 500 gems, 8 golden keys, 8 hours training speedups, and a 50% army expansion buff. And after this, things got pretty boring. Barbs, forts, ruins, altars, more barbs, more forts, more ruins, altars, more barbs. It was so boring in fact, that in the last two days I decided to give rank 2 a visit. He's been sneaking up on me for days, but I tried to keep the 50,000 point difference between us. I managed to find him on the field while he was inactive. I sneaked up on him, took a selfie with him, then waited till he got active again, then spent a bit of time to annoy him by killing the barbarians around his AoE marches. Eventually he texted me and we had a nice little conversation, he turned out to be a pretty cool guy. He also said that he wouldn't try to push for rank 1. At the time I wasn't quite sure if I should believe him, but he turned out to be a real gentleman who kept his words. Cheers for you Rick Temtem, you are a cool dude. Before the end of the season I managed to get another rank 4 on the Mightiest Governor day 2, getting an extra 120 gems and a bit of other stuff. Then finally, finally the season has ended. And so did my suffering. And I won with 5,056,293 5 points. Yeah, I know it's not that much, but it was enough to get me a rank 1. Technically, I could have gotten a lot more, but at this point I was just really tired of the whole thing. And I thought to myself, why don't I just try to save up a little more AP for the more others before the next season begins. So anyways, without further ado, how many gems, speedups and resources did I get from this soul second grind? Let's get to the numbers. Before I show the numbers, I have to mention it again. While I tried to keep a track on the rewards that came outside of killing barbarians, it was a very difficult task, so my calculations are probably not 100% sure. They are more like an approximate number. Sorry for that, I'm pretty bad at math. I'm not John Wick. So before I actually calculated how many things did I get from killing barbs, I opened Lohar's necklaces. It gave me 3,110 gems, 60.7 million wood, 57.8 million food, 5,108 arrows, which in total is 240,320 alliance credits, 2 days 4 hours 10 minutes building speedups, 2 days 6 hours 50 minutes research speedups, 2 days 2 hours 35 minutes training speedups, 2 days 7 hours 45 minutes healing speedups, and 1 day 3 hours 5 minutes generic speedups. Yeah. 
I expected a little more to be honest. Now for the strategic reserve supply chest. Opening them gave me 70.57 million food, 70.41 million wood, 3.26 million stone, 26 gold keys, 90 silver keys, 1 day 15 hours healing speed ups, 1 day 17 hours 15 minutes research speed ups, 1 day 13 hours 15 minutes generic speed ups, 1 day 10 hours 45 minutes building speed ups, and 1 day 17 hours training speed ups, and 26,880 alliance credits from 672 arrows. Wow, this supply chest always give these bad rewards. I really expected a little more there. And now for the final rewards. For this, I added the Lohar's necklaces rewards and also the supply chests. So, here it goes. In overall, I spent about 1.3 million action points, still had 479,350 action points left. It gave me 62,200 gems, 810,457,000 food, 804,314,000 wood, 630,113,000 stone, 319,953,000 gold, 1,276,000 level 1 resource packs, and 5,662 level 2 resource packs. Now about the speed ups. I got 213 days, 6 hours, 54 minutes training speed ups, 66 days, 45 minutes healing speed ups, 84 days, 45 minutes generic speed ups, and 231,200 alliance credits from arrows. And now, materials. This was the hardest to count, because I had to keep tracking what I was getting from the daily material production and other events and rewards, so most probably I made plenty of mistakes in my calculations. So sorry, I tried my best. So by killing barbarians, this is approximately what I got. 5045 normal leather, which is about 19.7 legendary leather. 5469 normal iron, which is about 20.1 legendary. 1758 bones which is 6.8 legendary, and I got 3342 normal ebony, which is about 13 legendary. And of course, for winning the honor ranks of the season, I got 1 seasonal coin, 40 legendary heads, 15 legendary equipments, 20 crystal keys, 400 hours of speed ups, and 400 blue pick your resources chest. Nice. Now, even if I made mistakes in these calculations, and I forgot to write down a few things that I've gotten, I think it's still really good. So, did it worth spending my AP on Lost Kingdom Barbarians instead of Marauders? It's something that everyone has to decide for themselves. For me, it absolutely did. For the simple reason of, every time it's pre-KVK Marauders event, I'm busy in real life, and since it's only 2 days long, I always miss a huge chunk of it. At least during KVK season, you have more time to decide when to kill Barbarians. And if you're sure that you have enough AP, time and energy to win, or at least get in the top 3, I think that the rewards are really great. So, thank you very much for watching this video. I hope you found it interesting. Fruity out. Bye. See you on the next video. Maybe.